back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Cody sent me an interesting guitar tonight that he found on his local Facebook marketplace. So I thought, yeah, okay, 2900 bucks, 1959 guitar, let's check this thing out. And to my surprise, that 1959 guitar actually ended up being a Gibson. Why does he not say Gibson 1959 in the title? That's probably why people haven't contacted him about it. But yet, at the same time, there's some things very, very, very wrong about this guitar. So let's just go ahead and dive into this thing. So first off, it's a 1959 Gibson Les Paul Special. So let's go ahead and look these things up on Reverb real quick here. So this is kind of what it originally would have looked like. This looks like the closest one for us. So we've got the brand new for this year double cutaway body shape. You've got the staggered controls here with a three-way toggle switch, a simple wraparound bridge with two soap bar P90 pickups. Note that one's like right on top of that neck tenon. These things are kind of like the SGs. They're known for breaking. And even though I'm not a big fan of the double cuts, these are just pretty cool guitars in general. They're not quite as expensive as the Les Paul shapes, but they were still considered Les Pauls. Eventually, this whole double cut shape turned into the SG. And then the SG finally got its name after a couple of years of still being called the Les Paul. But you'll notice that the neck on this, it has binding, but it just has regular dot inlays. And as far as the headstock goes, it does have a Gibson Mother of Pearl logo and the silkscreen Les Paul special as we were just talking about. So now let's go back to this one. What has happened to this thing? <laughs> So first off, we can see the pick guard is still original. We still have the original two P90 pickups. I mean, likely original. There's not a way for us to tell. There's not enough photos. But something has vastly changed right here. Instead of a wraparound bridge, someone has desecrated this thing with a Kaler. So that means at some point in time in the 80s, somebody just absolutely destroyed this thing and routed a big chunk out of this guitar. I'm scared to see what else might be hiding underneath this black plate. And due to the Kaler being installed, they had to put a locking nut system on here. Judging by that, I would guess this was done in the late 80s. So they kind of destroyed this one as far as the value goes. Kalers obliterate the value of vintage guitars, especially true vintage. I mean, it's bad enough when you find it stock on an 80s Les Paul, or it was modified to a 70s one, but something like this, there are now very few buyers that will be interested in this. But hey, if you want a whammy bar on a vintage 1959, this one's ready to go. Now, taking a quick look here, it appears that our knobs likely were also replaced, but they are vintage. It wouldn't surprise me if these were swapped over at the same time that this was installed in like the early 80s. And then we've got a little dongle switch right here. That makes me curious if we have any additional routing under here. Like, did somebody route it for a humbucker in the middle? That would be freaky. I kind of wish someone would do it now. Because normally you think like coil split with a switch like that, but it could also be like in and out of phase for the middle position. Sometimes people would do the series in parallel. I mean, it could be a whole bunch of stuff. It could also just be disconnected now at this point in time. Unfortunately, the seller doesn't say. So an added Kaler, that's not that bad, but what is going on with this neck? Why do we have a custom neck on this? I've got to say, I dig it. I think it looks really cool. Even the Kaler looks okay with this custom neck on it. It's a far cry from what it originally had. So my first thought is a re-neck job. Looking at the back of the headstock, I mean, it appears to have stock Gibson tuners that's not been changed out. It appears to be a Gibson construction. You've got a serial number. It's got a big old clunky heel. It appears to have been refretted with giant frets at some point in time, but the neckline actually looks pretty okay. So that probably means this had some sort of a partial refinish, but that's a straight up Gibson custom headstock emblem right there. And those tuners have definitely aged quite a bit. And it's an ebony fretboard with a mother of pearl block inlays. What has gone on here? Unfortunately, this is another one of those things that the seller does not actually explain it in the for sale ad. It makes no sense to me. But since this is Facebook, he does have a profile and he's kind of a, a public sharing guy. And he talked about his guitars a lot. So I was curious if I dug back far enough in his time page if I could find their true story. And I was able to find it. He posted it in April. Apparently, he inherited two guitars from his buddy. 
and he was told that the original owner bought it brand new in 1959 but didn't like the neck. So he sent it back to Gibson in either 1960 or 1962 and they put a real Les Paul neck on it. I know sometimes sending stuff back to Gibson to get a re-neck job and stuff, it just doesn't seem plausible or it's a made-up story, but this one, I think I'm willing to believe it. At this point in time, it was likely the SG body shape, but I'd be curious to see what the neck profile is like on this. Is it like a big chunky neck? I mean, that's kind of what it looks like right here. It at least has an authentic Gibson overlay on it. But here he's got it paired with a late 60s Gibson SG standard that once again, somebody's put a Kaler on it. I, I'm glad somebody gives these Kaler guitars some love, but it is quite the interesting guitar. So how much does this guy want? He wants $2,900. I don't know about you guys, but I think that is very fair. I mean, this guy wants $14,000. I don't think that's quite market. I mean, Reverb's price guide puts these particular ones between 32 to about 8,000. That's really depending on condition and if they've had repairs and stuff. That just goes to show you how much the Kaler really devalues this guitar. I mean, the right person could fill that in and restore it back to a wrap tail piece. But since it's a transparent finish, you would have to refinish it into something solid and the witness lines would still show up eventually anyway. So maybe just leave it as is. But if I was going to restore it, I would have to do a solid color. I would go the full route of a tunematic bridge and stop bar tailpiece. So, hey, if you're in the Carver, Massachusetts area, I mean, all things considered, I think it's an OK price. Because you even get a very old Gibson case. I think these are what, late 60s, the picnic style? Even still has the Gibson lockdown strap on it. So pretty cool little guitar for the money, I think. So for our playing demo today, let's go ahead and check out a double cut Les Paul special. <laughs> The only question left, would you rock this 1959 Gibson re-necked guitar or not? Leave your answer down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Oh, and just as a fun added bonus, I thought this drum kit was just hilarious. <laughs> That's a big old can of sweet peas. Obviously, this has been photoshopped, but that's a cool drum kit. Take care.